Hi everyone, I'm film club reporter Phoebe and a huge welcome to Film Club Live Show. We have a really interesting show for you today, all about film ratings. We certainly do. Hello there, I'm Ben from the team here at Film Club. Now if you have any questions about films and their ratings, anything at all, just contact us. The details of how to do that are running along the screen just now. And a quick shout out to Sandlands Community School and Drake Primary School, hello, are all watching today. I hope you enjoy it. I'm 11 years old and the one thing which always bugs me is that I'm not allowed to see films with a 12 certificate. Today we are joined by Lucy Brett from the BBFC to find out why that is. Hello. Hello there. Hi Lucy. Hi Lucy, so can you tell me about your job and what all the certificate symbols mean? Of course I can. I started off at the BBFC as an examiner which meant that I watched films and gave the ratings you see when the film begins and on the boxes and posters and now I run our education programme so I go and speak to kids in school, to university students and to people about what we do. Um, now what do you want to know about the BBFC, you want to know about the ratings? Um, most people know them quite well, they see them around a lot, you can see some of them here. Um, but to give you a sort of quick guide, at U, that means suitable for all, it's the oldest certificate so most people have heard of a U and pretty clear. Worth remembering, we're thinking of children of about four and over. Children under four, it's very hard to predict what's going to scare them or upset them. So my little boy was afraid of owls when he was four. <laughs> so, you know, Winnie the Pooh was a frightening film for him, whereas for most people it's a very sweet film. At PG, we're thinking of slightly older kids, around eight. So there is a big difference in what they can cope with. Things can be a little bit more scary, maybe a little bit more um, complicated. Once you get to 12 and 12A, there's sometimes a bit of confusion on DVD a film would be rated 12. In the cinema, the same film would get a 12A. Um, you can't have a 12 in the cinema, you can't have a 12A on video. What a 12 means, or a 12A, is that at the cinema, you can go and see it if you're 12 and over. And it means we think it's suitable for 12 year olds. However, your parents might decide that you, you'd, you'd enjoy the film, maybe it's a film that they've seen themselves, or it's a character they know, like James Bond, and they decide that someone under 12 can go and see it. We're thinking of 12 year olds. Um, and then you've got 15 and 18, those are both legal certificates, you're not allowed to go and see a 15 or an 18 if you're underage and um, the person who sold you the ticket could get into trouble for letting you in underage. So those are the symbols. The guide. Brilliant. Yes. Um, what was, what's your next question? Why can't children make up their own minds on what they want to see? It's such a good question. It's a question I get all the time from my son and from other kids. Um, well, the BBFC, films need a rating. The law of the UK says all films that are shown in the cinema need a rating. And part of that ratings process that started in 1912 and carries on today is people were concerned about protecting children from things that might harm them and, you know, what might upset them might not be suitable. So that's how we've ended up where we are today. Um, but actually, we do encourage kids to think about the ratings of films because it might be that you decide you do or don't want to see something depending on what you're scared of or what you don't like. So it's actually important, even when you're younger, to think about what you're going to watch and make your own choices because I think that that's an important part yeah. of going to the cinema. It's a guideline. It's helpful. It's yes. helpful advice. OK, we have a test for you now. This is the trailer of that brilliant film a Disney Pixar film, Brave, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Now then, do you think the clip deserves a U or a PG rating? It stands 12 feet tall with razor sharp claws. His hide littered with the weapons of fallen warriors. His face scarred with one dead eye. I do my sword and... Leg was cleaner. Oh, that's my favorite part. <laughs> Merida, stop! A lady enjoys elegant oh. pursuits. I present my only son. He took out a whole armada single handedly. He was... With one arm, he was steering the ship. Oh. I want my freedom. But are you willing to pay the price your freedom will cost? Careful what you wish for, my mother would say. <sighs> What's the worst that could happen? Yeah! No more fighting! Show a little decorum! Feast your eyes! Ah! 
If you had the chance to change your fate, would you? Bullseye. Right, uh, uh, Lucy, what certificate would you give that trailer and why? Why? Well, that trailer got a PG. Um, it was probably at the bottom end of PG, so you know we're thinking of eight-year-olds rather than sort of ten, eleven-year-olds. Um, and there were loads of things. I don't know what you spotted or what uh, the kids watching spotted, but some things I would have noticed as an examiner and written down on my pad would be um, the hint of a bare bottom. Don't actually <laughs> fully see it, okay. but um, I have to think about a bit of sort of cheeky nudity. Um, <laughs> The scariness and what I think is really interesting in that trailer is it keeps um, going to the screen goes to black and when we watch that here it doesn't seem that scary but if you're in a cinema and it's completely dark actually a four-year-old might begin to find that quite unsettling um, we've also got some fighting and the bear which was also in the film later was very scary in the film so these things are stuff that kids might be a bit worried about the other thing we have to remember is that when you see a trailer We've all seen Brave now, so we recognise the things in the trailer. But when a trailer comes out in the cinema, people haven't seen that film yet. So it can be even more unsettling if it starts off in a slightly scary way. Mm. There's no way that a four-year-old would realise that it's all going to be all right in the end when they started watching that trailer. Does that make sense? So that's why I went up to PG. Got it. Got it. Over to our Film Club Live hotline now. We have a question from Carolyn, age mm. nine, from St Michael's School. Hi, I'm Karen and I'm nine and I go to St Michael's. All my friends watch 12 movies but I'm just loud. What would happen if I watched one? Okay, so just to repeat that, was Carolyn, age nine. Great question there. She asked, yes. all my friends watch 12 movies, but I am not allowed. What would happen if I watched one? Well, it's quite an interesting question, because I think people are a bit scared. I'm going to say you get sent to jail or <laughs> you'd end up in a dungeon, and, and that's not what would happen. Uh, it's The best way to explain it um, is that a film rating, it works almost like selling alcohol or selling cigarettes. The person who sold you the ticket to go to the cinema would get into trouble if you went into a film too young. So if you were 12 and you got into a 15 film, they would be in trouble for selling you the certificate. Technically, if your mum and dad buy a DVD, say, they can show it to you if you're underage and you wouldn't get, they wouldn't get into trouble and neither would you. However, what I would say is we'd never give a film, if I saw a film and I think it's okay for a 10 year old, I'd give it a PG. If I think it's okay for a 12-year-old, I'd give it a 12. And our guidelines are based on what parents tell us and what kids tell us as well about what scares them and upsets them. So that's why we've given them the rating. We're not trying to ruin anyone's fun. We're trying to <laughs> make sure that everybody's happy. So it's your and parents' responsibility? Uh, yes, totally. Team, teamwork. We're now going to go to a hotline question from film club member Alicia. Hmm? And my name is and I'm age seven and I'm from Chadwick Primary School and my question is how can you stop youngsters watching 18 year old movies? Thanks for that Alicia, I like the use of the term youngsters, yeah. I haven't heard that for years so that's Alicia, oh. a great question, how can you stop youngsters watching 18 certificate films? Well it's quite interesting, it's quite hard if you're under 18 to get into see an 18 film certificate because they'll ask at the certificate at the cinema because they'll ask you for ID and that sort of thing and what we also make sure we do is let parents and uh, kids know exactly what's in a film so we make sure that the certificate's easy to find and that there's lots of information online and on our app and on our website for students and our website for children to let them know what it is. Interestingly, in this country, my job isn't, part of my job isn't going into the local Odeon or View or whatever and taking kids out who are too young. If I worked in Cyprus and did my job, that would be part of it. So in some bits of the world, the people who rate the movies go into the cinemas and check. It's not our job, that job's done by other people in the UK. But our, our main goal is to make sure that everybody is well aware of what's in a film, what it's about and what its rating is, so everyone can make the right choices for themselves and so that especially parents and teachers can make the right choice for youngsters. Right. All the information they need. Yeah. Now we're going to look at the trailer for Alvin and the Chipmunks Chipwrecks. What certificate would you give this film? Good to be back, huh? Sure is. <laughs> the Chipmunks. Alvin! Get chipwrecked. Let's get off this 
beach and find some real food. Helicopter comes by, they'll see us. <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks, Chip Wrecked. So, Lucy, what certificate was this and why? Well, it got a U, but what's quite interesting about it is that, I mean, we can tell it's a U, I think. There's nothing strong in it. There's no language. There's nothing scary. There's a little bit of um, slapstick, so things mucking around. Um, but there's nothing strong in it. But it's quite interesting because I, I also wanted to talk about this trailer because of the way it makes you feel. Because it's fun, it's mad, it's, it, it, it's everyone noisy. enjoys it. It's noisy, yes. Well, and, and it's very obviously aimed at younger children, and um, so that, that that's a big part of making the decision is who's this for. And the other thing is that I think it's quite interesting because actually in that that could be a, the same story could be something that would be a PG or a twelve or even a fifteen because it's about some kids losing their daddy, isn't it? And it's a, so it could be a really upsetting idea, but Avon and Chipmunks is an example of a film where this thing that could be awful is actually okay, and you can even tell that in the trailer. One second they're upset about it, and the first thing Dave does is worries and goes to find them, and we, oh, I'm going to get quite emotional. We, yeah, we, we're tissues. never worried that Dave's not going to try and find Alvin and that he doesn't love them, but it's interesting that sometimes just the way something makes you feel, I think we'll watch another trailer where that happens. It's, it's quite an interesting thing about classification. Sometimes it's a lot about your response to it. Which can be very different for different people. Well, I'm sure, yes, and certainly for different ages. We're now going to go to another hotline question. This time it's from Ellie. My name's Ellie, and I have a I'm seven years old, I'm from Chadwell Primary, and my question is when did people start putting certificates on movies? Oh, thanks, Ellie. Great question. So that was just a repeat. When did people start putting certificates on movies? Was it last year, since the dawn of time? Well, it's a fabulous question from Ellie there. Um, 1912. So last year was our birthday. We were 100. Congratulations. So, yes, thank you very much. Like candles. I, I, I know it might not look like it, but I wasn't working there in 1912. <laughs> Interestingly, when they were working in 1912, examiners used to watch more than one film at the same time because there was no sound, so they could. So they could have one on one more and one on another. Can you imagine? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> we, we were, that nobody would be impressed if you asked an examiner to do that these days. Hard working. Ellie is back with another question. Good morning, um, Ellie. I'm seven years old and I'm from Shadowwood Primary School. My question is, do movies classifications change over time? Thank you, Ellie. Two questions in one show. Well done. Wow. Gold star for you. Um, so the question there, just to repeat, was do movie classifications change over time? Uh, yes, uh, the rating system has changed. So in the beginning there were only two certificates. Um, and now, of course, we have more than that. Um, and it's you know a good way to think about it. It's, you know, when I was your age, um, there wasn't a 12. There was a PG and a 15. And actually, I was, I was sort of 12, 13 when the first 12 came in, and that the first 12 film was uh, Tim Burton's Batman, and then the 12 became the 12A. So even in my lifetime, things have changed quite substantially because the 12A is a very different sort of movie to one classified at PG or 15. Okay. The evolutionary thing, yeah, sort of and stuck it's, in time. Well, partly because it's based on what the public think, and we've been spent the, in the last sort of 10, 15 years, we've been going to the public and saying, what do you think's okay in a U? What do you think is okay in a 15? Could there be swearing? Could there be cheeky bottoms in PG and a brave? You know, and so that we, that we will work in line with what mums and dads and teachers and kids think should do in things. Interactive. Speaking of interactive. Oh, blimey. I'll have a question. Uh, it's from film club member Dylan in Plymouth. And uh, some, he says, sometimes when I want to watch a DVD, I see two ratings. A normal rating, so just your, your normal PG, and then another rating in blue. I want to know what is the real rating and what is the blue rating for? Well, I think what Dylan is talking about oh, is the, the blue rating is the um, certificate from the Irish board. Example so, there, we can show to the camera. I mean, this one you can see that um, they both have the same certificate. So we've got PG, which is the BBFC rating, and then we've got the Irish PG, and that's in a blue head skin rather than the yellow triangle you'd be used to from posters here. Um, 
sometimes but only occasionally they'll be different because in different countries there are different rating systems but because we're close to Ireland and they make the DVDs in the same place it has both of the certificates on. There you go. So what you need to pay attention to Dylan is the BBFC one. And Home Alone too. My favourite film especially at Christmas. We now have the trailer for Hugh, Hugh, from Hugo to show you. It's a brilliant film, but is it for adults or just for children? Who are you? Hugo. Where do you live? Is it a secret? Yes. Oh, good, I love secrets. So you're all alone? Not completely. Where did you get this? Why would my key fit into your father's machine? Do you want to have an adventure? It's Tori. I think it's a message for my father. This is a treacherous place. Do you understand? Watch your step. It's Neverland and Oz and Treasure Island all wrapped into one. sure about this? We could get into trouble. That's how you know it's an adventure. My life has taught me happy endings only happen in the movies. The story's not over yet. We mentioned that it is hard to tell whether Hugo is for adults or for children. Does this make it difficult to decide on a rating for a film? Well, we certainly think really carefully about who a film is for because sometimes that will really make a difference maybe between two ratings because you, you want to make sure that the film's got the right rating for the right audience. Something like Hugo, it didn't change the rating, it just made it quite interesting because Hugo's a you. Not all yous are for kids, but actually what I think is really interesting when you watch that trailer is that it's for kids and grown-ups and maybe they have different responses. So as a mum, I find it quite upsetting, whereas my little boy watched it with me and he was just enchanted like he was watching somebody else's dream and he loved the robot and he wasn't thinking about this chain. I thought that was a bit scary, he thought that was fine. Um, and so what we're doing, it's a bit like being a detective, we're looking for clues, you know, what are the issues in a film, but also how does it make you feel, what does it look like? Hugo feels almost like an animation even though they're live action performers, um, it feels like a cartoon. Um, so it's got that feeling about it, do you see what I mean? So a lot of our job is about taking more than just a sort of tick box approach, but thinking, what is this film? Who's it for? Who will like it? How will it work? Questions, questions, questions. Questions, questions. Probably brings me to a little bit of a, a bit of a game show I've devised. devised. I'm sure it'll be commissioned very soon. It's called Higher or Lower, and it's all to do with certificates. So we're going to start off with a base film, which is Men in Black. Here we go, show it to the camera. That is a PG. It is a PG. Okay. Now then, my next film in question is War Horse. Is that higher or lower than a PG? We'll I go with you first, Lucy. Yeah, I think War Horse uh, is a 12A, so higher. Higher? Do you agree? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's oh, have a look. 12 on DVD. Yes, they're correct. Well done. Okay, so we're on a 12 now, and the next film to look at, let's have a little peek, is The Muppet Christmas Carol. A what classic. What do you think? Lower. 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 Okay. Higher or lower. Higher or lower. 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 I'll go with Phoebe. Yes. There we go. You can just see the U there. Correct. Um, next one. Home Alone Two. Okay. We're on a U. Higher or lower? I know Home Alone is a PG, but I don't know about Home Alone Two. What that would you guess? You. What do you Higher reckon? Higher. Higher. Oh, it's a gamble. Does she look sure? She should be. It's a PG. That's a 100% record so far. And then just finally, it is The Hunger Games. So is that higher or lower than a PG? I think higher. higher. Good teamwork here, good teamwork. Yes. There we go. It's a 12, or sometimes a 15, yeah. depending on the edit. But there you go. You've passed the test. No, I think Phoebe should yeah. get her job as the next yeah. at the BBFC. I think she did a great job. If I, if I did a great job there, yes. you're br brilliant. Well done, guys. It's been great talking to you, Lucy, and thank you so much for coming in and answering our questions. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you so much. Yep, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for all the, the brilliant questions you sent in as well. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We hope you enjoyed hearing from Lucy and all about the film classifications.
And remember, on tomorrow's Film Club Live, we've got someone very special indeed, Carl Needham. He is the co-founder of IMDb, started it all up himself wow. in his own bedroom. That's amazing. This guy knows a lot about films. And one more thing to remind you of is don't worry if you can't watch it tomorrow because you can watch it next week on the website. And also on the website, look at the competitions page. You can win some all-stars movie merchandise, DVDs, notepads, you name it, we've got it. Until then, good luck and goodbye.